Hi guys, my name is Uli Schiller from Massa Institute and we are on the uh, Music Massa 2011 on our stand here in Frankfurt. And uh, this is the expert talk and uh, I have a guest here on our booth and it is Peter Friedman, the founder and the CEO from Rode Microphones in Australia. Hello Peter. Thank you very much for the opportunity and very nice to meet you. So, uh, I've got some questions. Um, what is the secret behind your company, Rode Microphones? I'm a user from the old NT2 microphones. It's, I think, 15 years ago. What is the secret about behind your company, behind your microphones? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's a secret, but we're one of the few companies that really heavily invests in technology. Australia is a very high-cost country, so I've always, to, to compete with uh, low-cost Asian products, we had to invest in uh, CNC machines, automation, engineering. We have like uh, 15 times the cost, but we were able to uh, produce product at very, very low cost because of the volume that we produce. So the combination of high-tech machinery and large volume, that allowed us to produce a product that would normally be you know, a few thousand dollars and become only a couple of hundred dollars. You know? uh, um, I heard about um, that you manufacture all the details of your microphones in Australia. Do you use uh, the knowledge from China or uh, is this completely made in Australia by yourself? All the, the transducers, the heart of the microphone, the transducer, that's Australian design and manufactured from, from brass parts, you know, the mylar, sputtering, everything done in Australia. We, we do electronics in Australia. I have uh, through hole parts being used on some boards, the SMT line, we have a $2 million SMT line. But of course, like any manufacturer, we will import some parts, maybe, some, uh, of course, the components, switches, some metal work, but the critical components, the electronics, the transducers, that's Australian, yeah. Okay, uh, how many people are in your company? Uh, at the moment, about 110. Uh, we have uh, three offices. We have the major manufacturing facility for road and event in Sydney. Uh, we have a, a research and development uh, place in Seattle in the US, and that's where Marcelo Vicelli, Annabel Yusum, the people who develop the event, that's where they have their lab, Anechoic Chamber and all their lab for the event product. And then we have another place in uh, Santa Barbara, which is our wholesale uh, warehouse and sales for the US. Um, if you think of uh, thought 15 years ago, um, what was your engine? What is your background? Have you studied electronics or play an instrument? Um, I've tried every instrument. I'm a frustrated musician. Uh, of course, I love music, but I'm not. A, I'm not a good musician by any stretch. Um, I'm the. I'm the technical guy, and I'm, I'm the, I used to do mixing of sound for bands. My father was doing audio in the 50s, oh, okay. so I was literally born into the audio industry. So everything I can remember from birth. It's sound equipment, whether it's studio or live, uh, and now, of course, the recording side. That, that's my background from birth, in my blood. Okay, sounds interesting. What was your first microphone you built? Oh, I had so many. I think the, the mics that I started with when I was a kid, some of the Swedish, uh, you know, Pearl, my lab. Yeah, I, of course, yeah. I have Neumann, or AKG. Have you modified this or, or have you modified this? Have you pimped this or? No, in those days, no, I didn't. I, I mean, I, I had a line of my head of Sherps. I had everything, you know. And uh, then eventually, when I started my own, of course, I looked at what they were doing, and I thought, well, that's some beautiful things. What can I do to come out with? And basically, it was the price, you know. I didn't understand why they were that expensive, to be honest with you. And then I understood it was because they didn't sell many. So if you develop uh, some technology and you only sell 100 or 200, you must get your money back from that 200. We currently sell 15,000 microphones per month. So when you do that kind of quantity, of course, everything changes. The volume allows economies to scale. And that's how I started, same from, very, from day one, large volume. Okay, how is uh, uh, the last test of your microphones? And what do you design the microphones at the end phase of uh, the production, in the, no, in the development? Yeah. Well, uh, for, for, for quality control, of course, we do. We have uh, all the electronic test equipment. Every capsule is tested. We have uh, electronic, uh, like uh, AP systems, where we, we test every board. And then the very final thing: every single microphone, we listen to it. But if you're talking about development, um, the, it starts with sound. You know, what do we want to hear? What, what is when we record an instrument or somebody's going to sing? That's the key. And then I translate that into a technical thing. We don't just use technology to say, oh, it must look like this on the measurement. No, it's what it sounds like. That's the, that's the beginning. And then we use technology to quantify that and qualify it later on. Well, okay. 
Um, another product of your company is are the monitors, loudspeakers, and called Event, and uh, they are an old famous one, the 2020, I think. And uh, um, what can you tell me about this uh, line? Oh, so Event were friends of mine from the U.S. I met uh, the, the people who started it. It was actually the Elisa's people, for Russell Palmer, uh, and he started Event in about '94, and they were actually doing distribution for Road. And so we were friends for a very long time. Uh, about five years ago, I had the opportunity to purchase the company, which I did, oh, okay. which was uh, so exciting for me. And then we started a new project to develop the flagship product that I wanted to do, which is very high end, and that's the Event Opal. And that took us uh, quite a long time. And I mean, of course, you have to listen to it. I think it's the best in the world. But um, every single part of that product was designed from scratch. So much engineering. I learned so much. It was sometimes painful, but um, I now know how to make studio monitors. <laughs> well, studio monitors is a complex theme, I think. Um, have you only uh, the near field situation and what do you think about the reflections on a console? Okay, at the moment it's so we have Pro Tools and the small stuff, but uh, we have sometimes Neve or SSL consoles and reflections on the surface. What is your opinion in this direction? Yeah, well, you know, that's the, that's the interesting thing. So, you know, a speaker is, is going to be used in some area. You must take that into consideration very, very important. In fact, we actually, in Australia, we distribute a line of uh, acoustic treatment from a company called Vicoustic. So uh, it's very, very good gear. And so I would say to somebody, if they're going to set up their room for listening, you've got to get the, the acoustics right. You can't have reflections off console or off walls. It's going to muddy the sound. So that must be taken into consideration. No matter what speaker, the best in the world will be a problem if it's not done correctly. I think it is a whole composition, the room, um, the speakers and uh, the engineer who sits behind the console, I think. You can't, uh, a lot of people say you can use software to remove reflections. Well, that's just physically impossible, you know. A reflection happens on a, on a console, maybe you can EQ something to change it, but you're never going to get rid of a reflection. It's, yeah, so yeah, the way you set it up, very, very, it's critical. Okay. Uh, Thank you for the very interesting conversation and uh, hope we met us again here on, in Frankfurt and maybe I'm um, with you in Sydney in the next day. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, this was uh, our expert talk for the day and uh, we are back tomorrow. See you.